Cher Jérémy, je vous ai promis de faire une vidéo spéciale pour vous où j'essaierai de vous démontrer et de vous expliquer ce que j'ai déjà fait dans mes vidéos précédentes. Dans cette vidéo, spécialement pour vous, Jérémy, je vais démontrer et expliquer pourquoi Wim Winters et ses partisans aux marques de métronome pensent que beaucoup ne peuvent pas atteindre le tempo requis. Et maintenant en anglais, Dear Jeremy, would you like to take Bach's fourth prelude from his booklet Sechs kleine Preludien für Anfänger auf dem Klavier? That is, six little preludes for beginners on the clavichord. That's a nice prelude. The key is D major and the time signature is two fourth. D major is a happy key if you haven't tuned the piano in the equal temperament. I tuned my piano in Valotti tuning. D major sounds different from C major, E major, F major and so on. Okay, D major is therefore a cheerful key. Jenny understands this too, because the tempo is allegretto, the quarter note is 92. Hans Bischoff, who also published the inventions 50 years later than Jenny, gives the same tempo allegretto and quarter note is 92. So Bischoff agrees with Jenny. One more thing, the rule that we have to respect and follow the metronome mark that the composer gives us is correct, but so are the rules Jenny gives us in his piano school, part 3. These rules of Jenny mean that we cannot take the first rule literally. So, we have to combine both rules. That's what I do. I let the metronome tap at the required tempo first, in the first bar, then I'll play. But respecting Chinese rules, which can you find in my video number 12. Okay, let's get started. First, I put my metronome on 92 and then I let it tick for a while. That is the quarter note. And now I'm going to play. The first bar. In the tempo of the metronome. That's correct, isn't it? Now the third and second bar and the first note of the third bar. Now you can hear that the first note of the third bar is a bit too late. Listen, I tap with the metronome. Then you can hear it. Do you hear it? When I play along with the metronome, you get this. That is, now it is too soon. But you must come a bit too late on the first note of the third bar. And why is that? That first note of the third bar must have 
not can have, but, but must have an accent. Bach wrote here a trill, and the trill gives a note mer accent. Now I play it without metronome, and then you can get this. In the first note of bar 4, it is the same, and in bar 5, the same, and in bar 6, the same. Every first note of these bars must come a bit late. you can hear that the metronome ticks much faster than my playing. You can hear it clearly, I hope. Now we are at bar 8. Here for the first time we get 16th notes. That is a sort of transition to another rhythm. That transition uh, must have a little time. Listen. So in bar 8 I play perhaps a little bit slower than the metronome. I begin at bar 7. You hear? When I play with the metronome, you get this. It sounds like a hurry. That is not nice. That is what Jenny also says. Don't play fast notes in a hurry. Then it becomes... Uh, a sort of uh, a foggy playing. And now, uh, like Jenny advises, then the metronome is too fast. And that is the same for bar. 10 till bar 17. And besides that, look at bar 10. There you have a jump. In bar 12 also a jump, a little jump. Here again a jump. And here again. And here, and here, the jumps asks some time, very little, but more time than the metronome you gives. Then you get this. faster than my playing. I play from bar 7. Thank you. 
felt very hasty, very... Uh, if there is somebody who push you in your back, forward, 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 that is not the meaning of the music. So, here I play in the tempo of 92, but I play not as fast as the metronome. That is the difference. That is a rule from Jenny. Now we are at bar 17. That is the same uh, theme, but now five notes higher. That is the same as bar 1. Before the double line, before the repeat, that is musically, if I do not, it sounds too hasty. Listen, now I play it with the metronome. tempo you have to follow the whole piece no then it becomes uh, very mechanical uh, like a robot it must be music and music is fluctuating breathing waving now I play the whole uh, first half with metronome and later without. Bar 21 till bar 7, 26. 
seven. First, first with metronome. The G sharp must uh, have enough uh, accent. So here you must also 
play not too fast because the exciting of this transition uh, has to become to its right. And then from bar 39 we get another transition to D, D major, that the main key. D major. And then we get from bar 41 another transition. That's again E minor. And then in bar 43. That is A major, D major, it is all D major, and now the main theme in D major, that is the finish, the coda. And the return note. All these transitions uh, ask for same time. You cannot play that in one rush. That is not musical. So I play from bar 37 and you hear I play not too fast. <laughs> some time. That is uh, very simple. and I hope that you can hear that both durations are different. That is the same as here, when you play with the metronome, you get much shorter duration than without metronome. And that is not because I play slower, no, it is because I play more musical. That is the law, the rule, of making music. Okay, that is what I was willing to say you and I wish you all the best. Bye bye.